Uh, the front bench is back for another Monday, right here between four and five. We'll be thrashing out all the big issues of the selection. Top of the agenda, the big alert level decision today, as we've just discussed. Winston isn't happy about it. Also, the debacle of the rugby championship, the threat that even the bled is low may not go ahead. Welcome to the studio, political editor Barry Soper, PR Wiz and former ACT Press Secretary Trish Sherson, and former Labour Minister Chris Carter. Hello. Hello. Hello there. Right, we've got through. We've got Kiura. It is the wiki o te reo Māori, right? So yes, we should be no. doing a little Namihi bit of that. Namihi nui ki a Oh, well, kara we tō reo. Um, listen, thank you. I've done all of my talking, so I want to hear from you guys now. The alert level decision today. Let's start with you, Barry. Why not? What do you reckon? Um, well, look, I thought there was a lot of obfuscation by the Prime Minister this afternoon because uh, I was unsure, and I was so unsure that I had to ring her office to find out whether uh, the decision that's going to be taken next Monday uh, for Auckland, is it to go along with the rest of the country or is it simply going to go to alert level two. And I'd be surprised if you guys know the answer to it, because I didn't, listening to her, and I went back through it to listen again. And, in, and of course, the decision next Monday is not to take Auckland to alert level one. It's to keep Auckland at alert level two. So potentially we have weeks and weeks ahead of us still in uh, alert level two. I would two think Auckland. uh, Auckland's going to be at alert level two until we get to the situation that we had uh, of no community cases at all. Um, but uh, I also want to touch on the masks, but we can do the alert levels, if you like, at the start. Here. Yeah. I'm um, pretty strong on the masks as well. Trish, just tell me, what is your response, just really quickly, to, to the, the city, Auckland City being in alert level 2.5, with two yet to come, and the country still in alert level 2? I just don't think it makes sense to people. And actually, the, the biggest issue is this. I think the regions are right because hospitality, the events, everything, there, there's no business being done. Mm. But, but are people outside of that, actually, have they just lost the plot, really? People are just, they're tired and they're over it, I think. Yeah. So I, I I, was disappointed today and I think in Auckland at 2.5, again, events, hospitality, nothing is happening. Yeah, four weeks. What do you think, Chris? It's pretty conservative, isn't it? Well, I think it was a great decision. I think, I think that, <laughs> that, really I think that most, <laughs> most New Zealanders, particularly many most Aucklanders, will applaud what the Prime Minister announced today. You know, we had another case of community transmission announced today. I live in West Auckland. We've had a whole cluster of cases two schools affected, uh, no, actually three schools affected. So as long as we continue to get community transmission, Kiwis need to be kept safe. But I'll tell you, Chris, so she made a very me, sensible decision. What's to stop me next week jumping on a plane, going to a rugby match with thousands of other people? Uh, we're at alert level two. We're only allowed to have gatherings in this city at 10. Well, well, Barry, you go to the other uh, other part of the country. Barry, even outside... And you can go to a, Barry, a rugby match. Barry, I know that you're much better informed than that. You know that if you left Auckland and you went to a community event, it couldn't be more than 100 people. So it couldn't be thousands. But it's a, if and it's that, at alert level and, one, that's and what the, I'm Yeah, but we're about. at alert level two outside. Uh, we're, uh, we, we, are, we are maintaining it outside of Auckland some control over crowds. We're also trying to keep the rest of New Zealand safe. And you would, listeners tonight, will remember, if they were listening to the Prime Minister today earlier, they would have heard her say that, that medical professionals had given a 25% possibility of uh, the virus escaping Auckland under the current conditions. So if all well, of the conditions That's are That's simply lessened. because of travel, though. And we're told yeah. by um, Michael Baker that if you climb onto a plane with a mask, you're going to be entirely safe. The plane can be full. Now, what's changed between Ashley Bloomfield telling us, like Heather said, three weeks ago, that uh, mask was simply an adjunct uh, to uh, social distancing? Well, now it seems Ashley Bloomfield has changed his mind and it's all hunky-dory, it's all safe. No, I think that the government and, Ash and the Ministry of Health are looking each day at what's happened, what number of infections are occurring, what best practice internationally is. You know, earlier on... Internationally, masks were not seen as so important. Now the science shows that they're What's actually... changed? Because the science has shown, we, we've learned from this virus, it wasn't around until Although, until to be February. fair, in the last three weeks, the science hasn't changed, right? We've had the same science for the no, last no. three weeks. But, but, I think you nailed it, though, Heather. I think the problem is there is no evolving of this to be able to be more granular and more realistic to let people go around sure, their daily, their daily lives. About. Well, I don't evolving. Well, I don't think so. And I mean, it's I just think evolving we're, slowly we're, and carefully. We're going to come to it when we talk about the rugby, but that is a classic 
classic example mm. of this government simply saying no and not being able to think right. through how no. you can I, help I, things yeah. carry Trish, on. Trish, I agree with you. It is a classic example, but it's a classic example of Jacinda and the government taking a cautious and safe approach and following the science. All right. so do, you know, do you know what was ridiculous? And, and sorry, Heather, I know you want to get on, but um, it was ridiculous to me at the beginning of the lockdown. It's the old squeaky wheel syndrome that if, if you make enough noise, things get, uh, get fixed. Remember the uh, green keepers and the bowling green yeah, keepers? Yeah. They were told they weren't allowed to go near it. Well, is grass going to give you COVID-19? <laughs> I think not. Well, you never know, Barry. The science is evolving. I think the three of you have become too cynical. Let's keep, <laughs> let's, let's let's, keep our community safe. <laughs> let's take a break and we'll be back very shortly to talk about exactly that, the grass and the rugby pitch. Quarter past right. four, News Talk ZB. All right, it's 18 past four and you're back with the front bench. We have got Trish Shearson, Chris Carter and Barry Soper with us. All right, let's start with you on this, Trish, because you raised it first. Rugby. Um, obviously the wrong call to make. How badly wrong? Oh, it was a shocker. It's a, just an absolute shame because it's not about the games and filling the stadiums. It's about all of the business that would have come in around those games. And that's what New Zealand has missed out on. And can you imagine for, um, you know, the pubs and the hotels and everything who've had an absolute diabolical year, this would have been the one bright spot for them. All that has gone to Aussie. And for the sake of what? For the sake of the inability of officials to get off their backsides and actually think through but how Trish, you okay, can make modifications. Let me put it to you like this. We have been harping on about exactly this issue, but it wasn't rugby, it was business, right? We've been harping on about it, harping on about it, nothing has happened. It's it's now just noise at most people. So is this going to cut through or is this just more noise? I think this is more noise. The problem is, obviously, that, and I'm generalising, but your yeah. core rugby supporter and the ones who were, whose nighties would have been totally ripped by this decision, <laughs> they're not exactly um, probably core Labour voters, yeah. a lot of them, so I don't think it's going to hurt the government. But I do think... <laughs> Over time, <laughs> these are the these are the bits that really start to chip away. Because if you think about what yeah. what we've lost this year in New Zealand, it's not just that we've been locked down. We have lost the fun. We have lost the daily, the excitement, the going out. That whether you're into arts or culture or rugby, all of that has gone. And so when this was taken away, it was just another like a oh god, you yeah, know. And, and on a purely political, sorry, Chris, on a purely political level, and maybe you'd like to pick up on this the purely political level of the Prime Minister saying this decision was made by Sands, um, Sansa. Sansa. Sansa, sorry, uh, simply uh, because it was the politics of the organisation. Well, it had nothing to nothing. do with politics. It had everything to, to do with the restrictions that we were um, putting on isolation and quarantine. That's oh, all. Barry, nothing to do with Barry, politics. It also had a lot to do, I think, with the fact that, that stadiums in Western Australia, South Australia... Tasmania and the Capital Territory could fill their stadiums because they've had no cases of COVID for months and months. So, you know, that has to be a strong consideration in these these countries making this decision about where they'd, whether they'd come to Australia. Well, hang on, why couldn't we do it? Because, because, because well, who we know, haven't had it for months. In, in, no, in, in, we, well, we, did, we didn't have it for months, but we have it now. We had a case in again today. Yes, indeed. And, uh, and who knows what the situation will be like in November. Look, South Africa and Argentina are, ha are having COVID explosions at the moment. High risk in bringing them here. They have to be, they have, they'd have to be thorough, you know, New Zealanders would expect them to go through quarantine, but also, but you know, are, also, they are. Quarantine. and they're in a, they're they're in a bubble. Also, also the, these, you know, the, the, some of the nonsense that's been said about this situation. We heard from from the guy Rob Nichols from the New Zealand uh, Players. Rugby Players Association yeah. saying, "Oh well, the government said they all had to be each one had to be individually in quarantine in th within the first three days." Jacinda said, "That's not correct." She said at an interview yesterday, she, they, she said the government was perfectly prepared to be flexible. But they couldn't compromise the quarantine situation. Look, that, and, that and is, Trish, but that and is Trish the, you, just said, you just contradict Trish, yourself. You Chris. just you just said a few minutes ago that that New Zealanders need to have fun. Well, in last week's episode, and I think you're really a nice person, but you were you were, you were going <laughs> on we and go. on about Matariki <laughs> and saying, "Oh, it's just an excuse to have some fun." Well, I did I, I did so, it. I said so, we should. It's, it's not the time for another public holiday. Well, no, That's think, not about not having I, fun. I think actually, if we listen to it carefully again, it's about you also raised about oh, it's just soft. 
having some fun. Look, as you know, lots lots of Labour supporters are very keen rugby uh, fans. We're going to have two. Name me one. We're, we're going to we, <laughs> Grant uh, Trevor Mallard. Trevor Mallard. <laughs> <laughs> we're going we're going to have two of the Bledisloe Cup games here. People will be able to watch it safely on Sky with the, the games that are taking place in Australia. I think this has been about about advertising this decision. It's been about capacity of stadiums, and it's about the certainty that in many parts of Australia they'd be able to fill the stadiums. Okay. And there's no just, guarantee they could do okay, that. Okay, and that's Zealand. fine. But just to counter the COVID. spin, just to counter the spin, and I feel obliged to do that. Um, oh no, Sansa, surely not. Sansa, the rugby union, Brent MP, Brent MP, chairman of the New Zealand they've rugby all union, said it was the quarantine was the problem, as did Rob Nichols. So I think we're going to have to accept. Well, I'm that not, I'm not disputing that wasn't part of it, but it's not the whole picture. It was. The, but, it was ninety-five. Ninety-five percent. Actually, colleagues, it's a very important part because we've got to keep Kiwis safe. Yeah. Okay. And, no, that's and, fine. And, we're and, not disagreeing. Know, although, and, and Trish, you, you talk know, about about fans coming. Well, well, we can't have large numbers of fans from Argentina and Australia because the pla- both places are ripe with COVID. But you can't, Victoria, no, we're not having them. Listen, we're having so, Kiwis. We've got so, Kiwis that'd be there with a hot got dog to go and a hot break. We have to go yeah. to the break. Listen, we'll take it very quickly. Uh, we're with the front bench and when we come back, let's talk about those two TV ads that have been put out by uh, right. Judith Collins and Jacinda Ardern. Very, very different. Uh, 4.23. All right, it's coming up 26 past four. Now, we have got to very quickly whip through this, uh, but this is fascinating stuff. Both the TV ads are out. Labor's first and then Nationals. Let's take a quick listen. Here's Labor. These are uncertain times, but we've seen what we can achieve with a strong plan. So let's stick together and let's keep moving. All right, and let's have a listen to Nationals. New Zealand, let me be strict with you. Communities, livelihoods, futures are at stake. Yes, it requires historic debt, but more importantly, a team you can trust to manage it. All right, so um, here's the thing, Chris. Uh, the Prime Minister's one, let's start with that one. She's clearly trying to kind of um, pitch herself as, as a strong, stable, older woman, right? Hence the teacup. <laughs> did you notice that? Because there's nothing that says I, old I didn't lady notice, lately, right? oh, I didn't notice the teacup. I just thought she looked fresh, alert, <laughs> in charge, and it, and it was very focused. You know, it was about and there COVID were books first, to make it look keep, like she reads keeping books. New Zealand safe, then and rebuilding, Joseph back Savage in business, over her throwing shoulder. a couple of goodies in, like free apprenticeships, and yeah, yeah. growing the growing the economy. All okay, of that good stuff. And so, Trish, on on Judith's one, I thought that what they'd done was they deliberately not lacquered her hair with lots of hairspray. So she had a lot of flyaways, but it made her look imperfect and soft, don't you think? I think both of these are so dreadfully boring. I cannot (laughs) believe it. And I think they underscore overall, this election should be electrifying, right? We're in the middle of a pandemic. That's why they don't want it to be electrifying. Everything else Both of these ads say to me that the black swan of COVID had never flown across our our golden pond and crapped right through it. (laughs) And it's just, and it's just every, but business as usual, they are so boring. Yeah. And the one thing I will say about about uh, the national ad, and the same with their billboards, who is in charge of art direction? The colours are so washed out. Yeah. Drive around town and look at Jerry and and, and Judith. The one by they, your office looks terrible. Yes. It's like it's been out in the sun for 70 years. 70 years. Well, yeah. I wasn't going to use exactly the word boring, but it means the same. I think they were very staged. And um, certainly Jacinda Ardern came across as being very soft and very kind, which is what she wants to do. Having a cup but, of tea. But I thought it was a pity <laughs> they didn't film it in her beehive office. So yeah. The Prime it's Ministerial Office. Oh, they had, this it sounds fake, like pre- they had this fake office. Oh, ba- and, um, ba- Barry. And, 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 no, but Barry. she was on okay. Barry. Barry. Judith Can you just follow Barry. instructions a little bit more? We'll take a break. We can go to the headlines. After that, when we come back, I've written a column at the weekend, which which Chris is very excited oh, about, man. how good <laughs> Labour was in the first week. We'll talk about that. News from ZB. Level 2.5 announced by the Prime Minister for another week. What do you reckon about that? Uh, I personally don't mind that. It's inevitable, I guess. I mean, we, we're still having cases with mini clusters, sub clusters and whatever clusters come up. Uh, I think it's best for to stay in level 2.5 because it gives us that flexibility for us to be cautious against our approach while still making sure that the economy is running, I guess. We have enough protection, but we can still move forward, I guess. Well, I'm deep, deeply disappointed, to be honest. Well, because it's just, it does make sense. Look, at 2 o'clock, uh, half past 2, Hobson Street is absolutely empty. There's just no people in Auckland CBD. How the businesses can survive if there's no people there? And we are sitting here and scared of one or two cases. That business support package, which was the wage subsidy, well, that's my personal opinion. I can't call it the business support. Business support is the rent 
uh, outgoing power phone lights. Europe did that, why New Zealand can't? Uh, it's probably a good idea. I live, I live in Queenstown, so we're going to level one on Monday, so we're good. Yeah, That's why I'm putting my mask. It was no surprise. I didn't think she'd move anyway. But to be honest, we're over it. <laughs> and I think most people are. We just want to get back to at least level one. Well, we opened just before the lockdown, a couple of weeks before the lockdown. During level one, we started to pick up. We're now down 50% of what was on level one. And I can only imagine how bad the hotel across the road struggle, just because they don't get anywhere. Yeah, they're getting conferences here and there. Um, on the weekend, they had maybe 10 rooms booked in such a huge hotel. Level 2.5 is a little bit more uncertainty, I guess, downstream businesses, restaurants, and all of those stuff. They, they, they don't have certainty on when the volumes are coming back up and when, when people are coming back up to to order food or to do all of those other services that they kind of need? Well, we've all been told that the best economic response is the health response. These two things, they can't be together. So if we go in towards the health support, that's fine, but then you need to provide the business support. The wage subsidy, it does support the businesses up, up to a certain degree, but not, you know, to the full extent. Everyone is saying that CBD is empty for two months. There's just no people there. Well, we are definitely down, probably by about 30%. Obviously, after these lockdowns, we are very busy for the week after. Everybody wants a haircut. But, you know, it just tapers off. And today, we've only had a few people in. It's been really slow. You look out the window, there's nobody there. Nobody comes to town on a Monday anymore. What do we do? I just think this is the beginning. This is the start of it. Things are going to get quite bad. Don't tell me about border control. I just think that was a shambles, that whole thing in the beginning. I think we believed one thing, but they were doing something else. So it didn't surprise me at all when it came back so suddenly. Uh, it's uh, not very impressive that that actually got to happen, I think. It should have been should have been a lot stricter and it shouldn't have been allowed to happen. It should have, should have been enforced a lot more heavily. Well, we are on the island and I honestly don't understand if the border was closed, if everyone's supposed to be tested, why there was a failure there? I can say that there is a still the opportunity area. There, there should be uh, considered some more aggressively in terms of controlling it in the borders. And, uh, and the people who are being in the quarantine, they should be have very serious in terms of uh, going outside and everything. That should be some. Better yeah, better security should be there. Um, on the text machine, and by the way, you are welcome to text in on 9292, and I will get to it a little bit more this half hour than I have in the last half hour. A text says, Heather, why don't you Aucklanders realise the rest of New Zealand doesn't want you out here <laughs> until you clean up your act? Jay, thanks for spreading the love. We we really appreciate it. Now, listen, um, last so yesterday I wrote a, a column, uh, Chris, this is the one that you really liked, um, because what I said is that Labour just nailed that first week, right? Apart from the Sanzar thing, which I think was awful for them, everything else was just amazing. Would you say that they have won the first week of the campaign? I definitely definitely would, Heather. Uh, you know, it, it, it's, there's five weeks to go, so, so you know, the, this won't always be the case. But I, I just think there wasn't much oxygen for anybody else this week. Mm. You know, there was the small business announcement. There was the 100% renewable energy. There, of course, the tax you've already referenced. There's Matariki, you know, that fun... Uh, that wonderful uh, for, public holiday we're exactly. all looking forward to. And yeah. there's the border exemptions for people that are currently stuck overseas who are married to a New Zealand resident or partner. So all of those were very newsworthy. It was almost Trumpian-like in that it dominated the news cycle. You know, I don't know what Trump, a Jacinda I, I, would like I, I, you I, I, likening I, I, her I, to she, Trump. She is, of course, there's no parallel as people, but <laughs> Trump tends to be the, the only story in town most nights on American in American yeah. media. And so for this week, definitely Labour, because you know Labour just dominated with policy. And I have, I've been sort of thinking all week, here, Trish, that I wanted to say to you... That Something you said, kind, Chris. Uh, and <laughs> you said last week Labour has, has, you know, has no policies. Well, we hit you with some pretty heavy ones this week. Well, well, well did you, <laughs> did you see, really? You don't want an endorsement from me, Chris, because it's so conservative that I love it, right? Let's, let, let's come to this, OK, Could because it appears to me the narrative bedding in around this election is not a bold policy. It's about fiddling round the edges. The Matariki public holiday is a brilliant example what about of... a small business package? That was pretty good. Well, he, well here's the thing. Again, I think, though. Last yeah, week, yeah. which was pretty important, there was the, the business 
leaders, <laughs> um, the business leaders debate from Business New Zealand, what was the main message from business? No one has a plan. Their yeah. message was there was a lot of the the what and the and the why. There was no how from any of the parties, and I think that is what um, but, but is really concerning Trish, about this very no, no, tangible house from Labor. You hit the nail on the head. You said that the opposition was denied oxygen, and you're absolutely right. I mean. You come up with a public holiday. Now, I think it's pretty cynical. You come up with a holiday like this. Why not replace Queen's birthday or uh, some other holiday or no, Labour no, no. Labor weekend? Barry, I mean, no one suggested that. Well, well, no, no, but why not? Why, because uh, New Zealand no, doesn't have why that many impose another so, impost on business look, in New Zealand? Look, Heather reminded thing, us but, last week at the intro to this topic when we discussed it last week. New Zealand sort of sits at about the middle of, of OECD countries. And but that no doesn't matter. That's, that's neither here nor why there. We're, go, we're going into an economic period at the moment, the likes of which, which we've never seen. Anyone in this building has never seen before. And, and what do you do? You come out... You stick on another public holiday. Yeah, where Kiwis, where Kiwis go out and, another and, chance and to where Kiwis together. go out and spend money in small businesses, go to rugby games and do other things well, that stimula can't. stimulate our domestic economy. And the other thing That's is thing, that, that the taxation policy, to me again, that was cynical because mm. it basically moved the argument uh, off the campaign no, board. It, no, because, no, 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 Barry. no, no. One it keeps tax things on stable. over one hundred and eighty thousand dollars a year. So you tax the rich pricks. But you leave uh, everybody else alone. It just doesn't uh, Barry, make sense. As, as, the, as the finance minister, Grant Robinson, said, it keep people don't want huge change at the moment. They want stability. They want to mm. get the country right. Then, then they, things will be looked at. And also, who knows what will happen in the coalition negotiations. Well, let's focus on week two, because if ever La a National was going to make the running on the economy, this week is the week. We've got two big things coming up. We've got the um, the prefew, the pre-election yep. fiscal update, mm, when the government opens its books. On, and, on Wednesday, and, and, and then right? the next yeah, day, we've yeah, got yeah. the national accounts opening up where we see just how far in recession we are. And I guess my... My issue around this is, and, and business reflected it, without a plan, this phase two is so important. Without a plan, I my fear is we are digging ourselves deeper into this economic hole rather than any of our political parties showing us how we're building the ladder to get out Can of I it. Can I just pick up, Chris, on one point that you said, what happens post-coalition negotiations? Now, if, for example, the most likely scenario would be that New Zealand First will miss out, the Greens will be at the negotiating table, They've got their poverty action plan. Uh, that's more tax. Grant Robertson told us no more tax. And uh, I've got to say, he was a bit equivocal when he was pressed on it by can Heather. I, can I? Um, but but the yeah. will, there could be yeah. more, more well, tax. Can I, come back to, can I come back to tax? Because we, we actually want to talk about tax in a yeah, minute. Yeah. What I want to know is, what is Labor's strategy here, Barry? Are they trying, because they've come out hard and fast, straight out of the blocks. I wonder if what they're trying to do is basically just lock in the sense that they are a foregone conclusion create a death spiral in Labour in, in nationals' votes so that they, it's impossible to recover. What do you yeah. think? Well, uh, Jacinda Ardern was even asked this week, and she was fairly equivocal on it as well, about being a, a, a government in their own right, Labour yes. ruling by, mm -hmm. uh, by itself. And if you look at all the opinion polls, that is a possibility. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think it's likely. We've had 24 mm -hmm. years of uh, MMP. Yeah, yeah. I think it's Nothing's highly unlikely. Moment, but right? nevertheless, it's not an absolute mm. impossibility okay. in this and really course, unusual right. time. And, and of course, if that should happen, then, then Labour policies that are uh, enunciated in the election campaign will be the ones that happen. I was interested to see that, that uh, um, James Shaw in his uh, you know, discussion about whether he'd go and sit on the cross benches mm. actually came up with no red lines. He, oh, said, yes. he said a wealth tax was a, a high priority, but there were no definite bottom red lines. Line. Let's come yeah, back no, to the no bottom red lines. Line, bottom line. I can see I can't be I can barely hold you people back from this tax decision <laughs> before we get to the tax okay, discussion. Sorry, Heather, before sorry. we get to that. Trish, you understand strategy. This is your business. What is the Labour strategy? I think you're exactly right. Just dominate the headlines as much as you can. But 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 having said that, when you also then look across at National and you, you critique that, it just doesn't feel like there's momentum. So Chris did mention that Trumpian thing and there's people and placards and things, but if you look across at National, it's, it feels quite so stayed. Can I ask you, Trish, do you feel as if, because we know that National in the past have dominated headlines. I mean, remember Strikeforce Raptor and stuff mm -hmm. under bridges? They have that ability to do it. Are they too scared because they're, they're scared of 
they're being ridiculed. A hundred percent. And isn't this the point, right? If there was an ever a campaign where you had a raft of policies, you thought, shit, we can't bring those out in normal times. Yeah. But really mm. bold, transformative stuff that is yeah. going to get cut through. Open the drawer and bring those things out and dust them You've off. You've got because, nothing to lose. Well, and yeah, I think that's what people are actually crying but out then for. Jacinda's declared a, a COVID election. And I think that uh, the National Party, and I know that they know, and they've been told, don't criticise Jacinda. Don't don't oh, say anything. Oh, come on, I, come I on, think Barry. That's no, been, no, no, been no, no. I think you're right. Sexist. People love her so much and it's that sexist. it's not going but to. But where is that gain. getting them now? But, but, where is that getting? That's letting, letting all, all the oxygen yeah, be well, sucked well, out of well, the, the well, debate. Well, Barry, getting getting back to what you've just said, that the, the Jacinda's declared a COVID election. No, the people have declared a COVID election. It's no, no, she said it. It's the only. It's the only issue in town. I agree with Chris. Absolutely, everybody. Yep, everybody has done it. And you know, I feel I feel sorry for the National Party actually because. Because you know, it's, you it's know a, what opposition it's, it's like. A very, I do, <laughs> and it's a very tough job being an opposition because you to try and get traction. Because your role is to criticise and hold the government to be to account, and you know there is just only one discussion in yeah. town. And 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 let's face it, just has done a fantastic job. The government's done a fantastic okay. job we in keeping take... Kiwi safe. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to yeah, dump him in a tick. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just so unpredictable what he was saying. Anyway, listen, we'll, we'll take a break. It's quarter to five. When we come back, let's talk about tax because we all want all right. to. News Talk ZB. Right, welcome back. It's 13 to 5. A text here says, Heather, the media have made it a COVID election. It's all you people talk about while we are starving for discussions on policies. Well, I'm going to give you a wish. Here you go. Let's talk about tax. <laughs> Barry, you're up first on this. Now, um, Labor has made it very clear. Grant Robertson has made it very clear. 39% tax is all they're going to do, right? Yeah. Do we believe them is no, the question. No, well, you can't. And I think Chris hit on it earlier on that uh, there's coalition negotiations to come post-election. Yeah. And the likelihood is that it will be, there will be discussions. And also the likelihood is, even though um, James Shaw hasn't given it his bottom lines, uh, wealth tax, I think, will be a big issue for them. And he's put that as a top priority. Uh, and uh, he, he has said, OK, they'll walk and sit on the cross benches and we could have a minority government. And that's uh, a possibility as well. But I think, look, uh, it's a cynical but a very deft move, I think, by Grant Robertson this week by simply uh, announcing one tax. And that was on people earning more than $180,000 a year. And in fact, uh, at 39 percent, I don't think too many of them will be terribly worried about that. Uh, so it's not going to be a, a major turn off. So, you know, I think I think um, without any other detail on tax, they've sort of moved it off the agenda and they've left uh, the opposition uh, basically gulping for, for oxygen because uh, where do they go after that? Yeah, let's have a quick listen to what Grant Robertson had to say when he was asked if they were implementing any other taxes. If your coalition partner insists on implementing taxes, will you allow them or will you not allow them? We will not be implementing any taxes beyond what we've announced today. Okay, so here's the situation though, Chris. You've got Grant Robertson in there. Let's say this: they, the New Zealand First isn't there. The Greens are their only option. Otherwise, they can't form government. Does he go back on that? Well, he says he's not going to. And I uh, hope listeners are listening carefully because if it's just a, a majority or a minority Labour government, of course, there's less chance that he will have to go back on it. Yes, so but but and, and, I mean, look, I think a lot of left voter uh, vote Labor. <laughs> look, I think a lot of voters are very, very motivated to get rid of the Greens, right? But if they end up in a situation, and goodness me, it doesn't take a lot to all of a sudden end up there like every other big party has on mm. on election night with MMP. What do they do? I mean, does he need to go back on it? Well, I, I don't know, but but one thing he does need to do is to try and and, and set up a government, uh, you know. And this is the, the problem, isn't it, Trish? This is why people aren't sure. No, and I just think history tells us there is never a bottom line. And when have you ever mm. believed a mm. po politician around uh, tax? And and I think this actually sets up for over time. You do a tiny bit now at, at getting back to that 39% tops, top rate. And that gives you another bracket that over time you can potentially um, yeah. move into. But I, I think actually the bigger risk around um, going back on it is not if you're negotiating with the Greens, but if, as it's looking... More like it's still unlikely, but it is more likely if Labor got there on its own, then um, you know all bets are off in the next term. They can they can essentially come out and, and do what they want. But then they'd never get back again. Yeah, at the exactly, end of the they are accountable term. at the next but, election. But the other thing is, I think what they should have done as well, and they haven't been touched for more than a decade, are the brackets. 
So you've got your seventy yeah. uh, seventy thousand dollars, and I think you know uh, governments or uh, uh, political parties have to start being honest mm. about this because those brackets are not working. You've got uh, nurses, policemen, um, you know, people like that on over seventy thousand dollars a year, and they're paying thirty three mm. uh, cents in the dollar tax. Yeah. So they they should be you moving the brackets. And in fact, you may remember that Simon Bridges he wanted to attach them uh, to inflation. So. Th- the discussion has been had, but nobody's prepared to pick up on no, it. No, but I, I think, think the, the bracket creep, and then you see, where, where could National go? There's a couple of things. One is, if, if you want businesses to start investing, you would be looking at tax breaks for businesses yeah. who want to invest in new factories or, or things like that. That would be the kind of bold transformational policy you could come up with in, in opposition to Labour. But also that bracket creep, particularly for hardworking middle New Zealanders, yeah. think about a family in Auckland. Who are going to be the hardest hit. Who are going to be the hardest hit and and that bracket creep is really significant uh, for them over time so I think if I have national that's exactly where I would uh, start to go. So they may resurrect that policy hopefully. Well yeah maybe. Let's take a break. It's going to be hard to though Barry they said no tax cuts but anyway let's take a break and when we come back I want to hear what each of these three are looking forward to in the next week in terms of this campaign it's 8 to 5 News Talk ZB. So let's just get an idea from each of these guys as to what they're looking for this week and what, what they expect is coming. Trish? I'm looking for a pulse in this whole election campaign. I just think it's so big and blobby in the middle. There's really nothing you can grab onto. And I tell you what I'm worried about, and I think the party should be too. Because of that and because of fatigue around COVID, I'm worried that voter turnout is actually going to plummet. And young voter turnout, what on earth are they turning out to vote on? Because right now there is nothing. And if you go back to those campaign ads, they won't even see those in their feeds or anywhere else. The messages just do not resonate. Okay, and what about you, Chris? Well, I'm confident there'll be great voter turnout. <laughs> but I think... Based on the Prime Minister's I'm, excellence, I'm especially, looking, especially amongst Labour Party I'm supporters. looking forward to some outrageous <laughs> behaviour from some of the small parties in, in the next week. You know, we mentioned earlier that there wasn't that Labour starved the other parties of yeah. oxygen in the, in, in, last week. Well, what happens when people are starved of oxygen? They get desperate. Yeah. So I think we're going to see desperation coming in the next week from, from the opposition parties. And from a big re- bus that's And it's going, going to be really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually I think that's a really good prediction as well. Barry? Well, of course, um, as was mentioned earlier, we've got Prefu, the um, pre-election uh, fiscal update mm. coming out this week. Uh, and that'll give us the um, debt to GDP and uh, no doubt the comparisons will be made about Australia. I think they were at 7% uh, growth Oh, yeah, and the GDP uh, numbers on on Thursday as well. Yeah, Yeah. Uh, and then you've got Crown Accounts on Thursday. So uh, for Grant Robertson, it's going to be a a big finance week. But I'm a bit like Trish. I would like to see uh, a bit more um, substance in the campaign. Um, And I know we have had a lot of policy, but they have been fairly uh, superfluous policies, I think, in the past week. But uh, don't forget Judith Collins. She's kicking off uh, by Zoom her election campaign on Sunday. So that'll be a goer. Willis! A is one way to describe it. It's neither here nor there. Anyway, guys, it's been really good to talk to all yeah, of you. Looking indeed, forward yeah. to next week already. Uh, Chris uh, Carter, Barry Soper, Trish Sherson, our front bench. Uh, we'll be doing it again on Monday. Stay tuned, though, because after the news, we're going to go to Chris Hipkins and find out from the health minister exactly what it is that changed his mind about the face masks. Because remember, three weeks ago, it was no, no, no social distancing on planes. All of a sudden today, what's changed? They're allowing it. And why is the rest of the country still in level two? News Talk ZB.